Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through a couple of use cases that you can explore in using new image generation from ChatGPT. If you are an online entrepreneur, content creator, if you're selling digital products, if you're selling print-on-demand products, I think you will get a lot of value out of it because basically what this model can do is that what none of the models previously could do. It can create mockups, it can create infographics, it can create images in your brand colors, it can create images in your brand aesthetic, social media images, like there's so many use cases. So I'm just going to walk you through my process and what I've discovered so far that I find useful for myself as someone who's selling digital products, print on demand products. <clears throat> I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Here I share all things I discover in AI, online business, creating passive income, selling digital products, and all this kind of stuff, basically creating a business based on your personality, based on your passions and interests, and how you can use AI to do that. Let's go to a tutorial. The first use case in ChatGPT is infographics or basically a combination of imagery and text, which could be used for many different purposes, right? So social media content is one of the most obvious ones, but it can be like infographics on any topic. It could be basically everything that you want to say with text in a combination or with the image. It could be ads copy or ads creative. It could be pretty much anything. But I'll show you a couple of examples of what I'm thinking, and then we're going to try and create our own. So there is a lot of inspiration that you can find if you just like don't really know where to start, right? You have an online business and you just want to explore what can this do for me. I think Sora is an amazing place to start to get the, not only inspiration, but also to get an idea on how to prompt, right, in order to get the best results. With the image generation in ChatGPT that just got released last week, a very interesting thing is that the, the prompts are really simple. So you don't actually have to overcomplicate that in a sense when you're starting out. You can get an incredible image, like very spot on, just like with one sentence or two sentence prompts. But if you want to go more advanced, then you'll have to find your way to prompt it. But now we're in Sora, and if you have a paid account, you have access Access to Sora. So you just go Sora.com and then you log in with your OpenAI credentials. So this is how it's looked like. And here's where we are on the exploration page. So we're just going to scroll down and we're already seeing some fun comic style, comic style images. We see videos. So Sora, it is a video generation platform to start with, but they also have the image generation now as well we can see a lot of already copyright things that we're not interested in exploring at all. We can see some really interesting examples. And I think this kind of wakes your imagination a little bit what could be done. So if you depending on your niche, depending on your audience, you can already now understand could images like this be something for your social media, for example, to bring your message? You like this image, let's say, or the style of this image, and you want to see how to, what kind of prompt that has been used there. So prompt was very simple. As you can see, it's comic book page in funny clay style. So you just copy this prompt and then play around with that. And you can provide the text here. You can provide the your own text, of course, and the ChatGPT will recognize the text that you want to put there. So here we can see also a really cool, this kind of thing I like, a hand-drawn cheat sheet roadmap. I think it's quite incredible. And as you can see here, the prompt has provided really detailed steps. So here we can see every single step. We can see every single word. This is quite incredible. So it has this ability to really integrate text in a way that just really clear, which hasn't been available before. So I think that is one of the biggest break breakthroughs. So you get the idea. Basically, scroll up. This is an interesting example. So we look at a smoothie. Let's say you're in a nutrition niche, you're a nutrition coach, and you give uh, your customers uh, different recipes. Here you can just turn those recipes into infographic, into it could be used for social media, it could be used for your digital products, it could be used for 
If you're actually writing a book or you want to publish a book on KDP, these are the images you can use. We can see here that the prompt was extremely elaborate and it includes all the ingredients very thoroughly. So here it indicates bottom left, like where things are placed and so on. So if you want to get really good output, like you just then follow the logics of this prompt. So you just copy paste it if you want to create a recipe and then you just add your input, right? Or what ingredients, what kind of recipe you're creating. <clears throat> so those are a couple of examples of infographics and we got some inspiration. We are actually going to try things out. One use case that I want to try is creating a mock-up. So the mock-ups will create both for digital products and for print-on-demand products. And we'll just see what's possible. Let's do it in ChatGPT. So let's say we're selling print-on-demand products and we want to create a mock-up showcasing our product. So for example, a hoodie that we've created on a real person wearing it in a certain environment, right? So let's say I just created already a mock-up on a matcha theme, right? So matcha lovers, holistic health, and people who are interested in wellness, on this kind of topics. So I want to create first an image of a person that I'm envisioning, right? Let's say a hyper-realistic photo of a woman wearing a hoodie walking in the nature. Super simple and just start general and then see if we need to narrow it down. And then we do like this, wearing a hoodie image attached, walking in the nature. And then we attach the image of our mock-up or what is our hoodie is actually looking like. And then we run with it and see what happens. So this is the product. And then we're creating the image of a person that we want to showcase this product on. And in a way you could start with just creating the photo of a person first. And then you just add the image of the hoodie to this, to the next prompt and just ask it to place on the person. So you can do it in different ways, but I'm actually curious to see if it can get it like this because I haven't tried it yet. We can already see now from the text, it's super spot on. Quite incredible, isn't it? Definitely room for improvements. For example, I already now see that the image is not exactly the same. So if it was, it has been able to capture the font. If you have only text on your products, this is going to be no problem. But if you have images, you might need to fine tune it a little bit. Let's see if we can fix that. And we can just do like this. I'm just going to screenshot this and write, make sure the image is identical to this. So after we got our first output, we, as you can see, we can just fine tune it. If we don't like something or something is not right, we can also fine tune what is she wearing. Like we can zoom out zoom in and things like that. So here's just like your creativity and how you see what is your brand vibe. Okay, so this one came very close depending on what image you have. Like you can see here color a bit different and now I can see that her neck is twisted in a weird way. Pro tip here, if you start noticing that it just gets wonky, always start a new chat because then it, it doesn't recycle what's already been discussed. I want to just try and see what else can we do. So I ask to make the hoodie oversized because I want to see how the oversized look would be and zoom out a little bit. So this is the last thing we try and then we move on to creating a digital mock-up. It zoomed out, it got a bit oversized. Okay, so that's working. The neck is still twisted, which freaks me out. That is easy, really easy to fine tune. We can see it can create a perfectly good mock-up of the actual product that we've created through print on demand with our design. Give and take a couple of tweaks that might be needed if the image didn't come up exactly as it is. I think the opportunities here, I just want to say like you, there is, there has been a traditionally a big problem for mockups in print on demand, because we know that if we're selling, if we have the audience that we know really well, we know who this audience and how they look like and the diversity it has, right? So this creates really great opportunity to create extremely personalized mockups to this group of people. So you can create images that reflect the culture, that reflect the demographics of this group in different settings. That 
makes your conversation as a brand, your conversation with the customers extremely intimate in a sense. So definitely try it out if you're selling print on demand products or if you have a, basically a brand selling physical products, because this can be done for all types of physical products. It could be mugs, it could be water bottles, it could be yoga outfits, whatever you're selling, bags and so on. I'm excited for you to try it out. Okay, so now we're going to move on to creating digital products. So if you're selling digital products, you know that one of the last steps after you've created your digital product is creating a mock-up, right? So how to showcase this digital product. And often you would go to Placeit or Canva and you buy those mock-ups or you download them. And that is like what other people are using as well. So here's again an opportunity to make it reflect the aesthetic of your brand, the aesthetic of your niche in a really good way. As an example, I'm asking it to create a hyper-realistic flat lay of a desk, minimalist aesthetics, an iPad laying on a desk next to a cup of coffee, next to a journal. <laughs> That's a weird problem. Next to a cup of coffee, let's say. And then let's see what happens. That's okay. This is pretty generic, okay? But the prompt was extremely limited. But you have this, let's just go with this as an example. But just so you know, you can create it in any aesthetics as you want. What I would do now, let's say we go with this image, then I will just start a new chat. And I will go ahead and add this image. And then I'm going to add a screenshot of my digital product. So this is the digital product I created a couple of months ago. It's a workbook and basically I'm uploading both images and I'm saying, please create a mock-up of my digital product. We can say final mock-up of my digital product and see if it understands. So here we can see the final result. So it actually understood and it integrated my screenshot. I want to try a couple of pro tips that I've discovered that you can also use to enhance like the performance of this right for you. One is using your brand color. So for example, if you have specific brand colors or you just want to create an image in a certain color, right? And you know the hex code to this color, you can actually give this information to ChatGPT and it will create that color. Second thing that you can do is if you have the font that you're that you're using that is publicly available, ChatGPT will be able to reproduce that, okay? Here I want to give a disclaimer right away. I would never, for example, take an artist's uh, or someone that I, like a, a font that I have purchased from an artist and just input it here and ask it to, to recreate that because to me this is stealing. I'm aware that those models are problematic in a sense that they are taught on work of artists and creators that haven't uh, given consent to that and it's a huge problem and I don't want to contribute more to this problem. So I'm not creating any images of famous brands or famous artists or and using them commercially. So that is just my take. What we're going to do is to create a simple, let's say, furry text. I want to create for social media some inspirational text in a furry font in certain colors. So we'll do like this. So furry text saying you got this in bold display font hex code and then we go to our then now i'm going to just use an example on a, of a random color palette but if you have your brand colors your hex code so you just copy the hex code and then you write here on background and then we copy, for example, this one. Since hex codes are like, that's like a, a system or a classification that is openly available, right? So ChatGPT has access to that. So as you can see, it has been able to create spot on colors using the hex code. Really recommend trying this. Everything goes back to what you and your brand stands for and infusing that into your marketing, into your social media, into your creatives by using ChatGPT. So I hope you found this video useful. Hit subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Thank Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.